We live in a democracy where we are moving in one direction uh, on women's rights, where most of the world, uh, most of our fellow democracies, uh, including Catholic Latin America, Catholic Ireland, are moving in the other direction, and we're sometimes nonetheless hailed as uh, the world's oldest uh, continuing democracy. Let me point out why that may be a curse. Uh, what the Supreme Court did is the logical culmination of our Constitution's uh, pretty much indifference to the concept of majority rule. Uh, the four, just, four of the five justices were appointed by presidents who lost the popular vote count, uh, confirmed by a Senate, which has nothing to do in its various structure, uh, really by reflecting the sentiments of a majority of the American people. Uh, most of us uh, are going to mobilize more come November, uh, and there is still in this country a chance uh, to uh, campaign uh, against the flaws in our primordial constitution's limits on democracy. Uh, we have long been com uh, complaining about that. Now, we also live in a rather incomplete oligarchy. Uh, but what's striking here is that with the exceptions of folks like uh, Elon Musk, uh, you don't hear the oligarchs uh, complaining or advocating for particular policy changes. They do it, but we don't hear about it. It's getting the tax code to do this. It's getting the tax code to do that. Uh, so that uh, when they get away with not paying any particular taxes on huge fortunes, as Michael Kinsley said, the real crimes in Washington uh, don't involve violating the law. They are all legal. Now, for some time, uh, most of us have been vexed about uh, this asymmetry in uh, funding uh, public purposes through the government, uh, beginning with Ronald Reagan's major cuts in taxes for the wealthy and for businesses, which were doubled down on by George W. Bush and tripled down on by Donald Trump. We really didn't have quite the hard data. Now, in recent years, economists have been focusing more on the causes of inequality. I think some economists, particularly at the University of California, Berkeley, who had long associations with uh, the French economist Thomas Piketty, were demonstrating in a sort of an aggregate way how uh, the wealthiest Americans were not paying uh, anything particular uh, in taxes. And yet, uh, the story had certainly influenced, I think, Democratic Party elites, uh, but hadn't really caught on at all uh, with uh, the mass population, uh, although there's certainly a popular wisdom, which is almost always right on this one particular, that the rich get away with all kinds of things. Uh, but as we know, uh, leaked documents uh, can have a real impact. We found, out, uh, found, that, found that out again last night. And uh, the crew at ProPublica found it out when they managed to uh, find themselves with a leaked document that really showed the tax returns of the wealthiest Americans. Now, a lot of publications would have run with that. Uh, ProPublica did more than run with that. They explained it. They explained what tax loopholes in what uh, tax codes enabled the very wealthiest Americans to get away with this. Uh, they put this all up on their website. Uh, I counted 38 separate stories that they put up on the website to explain all the varieties of uh, tax evasion, which are perfectly legal, alas, uh, that the wealthy employ. And the, headline, the headlines they generated showed that you know, some rather well-known individuals had sp uh, really been assessed no taxes uh, in, in particular years. In the case of Jeff Bezos in 2007 and 2011, in the case of the above-mentioned Elon Musk in 2018, Michael Bloomberg, a, a repeat uh, non-payer, uh, and a whole slew. That got a lot of attention. That affected democratic legislation. It fortunately didn't uh, get a complete consensus among Democrats, as uh, the uh, Arizona Senator Kristen Sinema uh, has actually resisted, along with Republicans, 
raising taxes on the wealthiest Americans, but there's no question that the impact of ProPublica's work had a real effect, I think, on a sort of democratic popular wisdom uh, by naming names and showing how the names got away with this. By ProPublica's calculation, uh, looking at the 25 wealthiest Americans from the years 2014 through 2018, they noted that those Americans' fortunes had risen by $401 billion over that time, and that their aggregate tax rate was 3.4%. Well, this clearly was uh, an, a heroic endeavor by ProPublica that the Hillman judges found worthy of the prize. There were many authors uh, and many researchers and many experts working on this series. Uh, three of them are here tonight to accept the Hillman Award. Uh, please welcome Paul Keel, Justin Elliott, uh, and, Elliot, and Ella Samani of ProPublica uh, for this award. So the, the second most common response we got uh, when we contacted a billionaire to ask them about their taxes were veiled threats that we should know that there might be legal consequences to publishing the information. The most common response, though, was that they followed the law. And for many of our stories, that may well have been true. Not all, though. We laid out a pretty strong case that Peter Thiel had bent the law to breaking when he stuffed his undervalued PayPal shares into a Roth IRA account that eventually grew to $5 billion. And the Campbell Soup heiress, who deducted over $170 million on her horse racing hobby, seems to have ignored tax law without consequences. And there are other examples, but overall, as Harold said, a lot of what we reported is how our system is designed to work. Sports team donors like Steve Ballmer are supposed to reap tax losses even as they, the value of their team grows and while their players pay full freight. Billionaire real estate developers like Stephen Ross are supposed to be able to go a decade without paying any income taxes at all. And our system taxes income, not wealth. That's just how it works. So for billionaires like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, income is usually a choice. Taxes are a choice. When we asked Buffett about his choice to pay a vanishingly, vanishingly small amount of income tax on his $100 billion fortune, he said, I believe the money will be of more use to society if dispersed philanthropically than if it is used to slightly reduce an ever-increasing U.S. debt. Workers don't have that choice. I, along with the, this team of uh, 10 reporters, spent all my hours in the past year scrutinizing the tax information of the wealthiest Americans. And it can warp your perspective a bit. More than once I found myself saying things like, only $50 million. <laughs> As in, so-and-so made only 50 million that year. But one thing that was especially striking, turning from that world, was reflecting on how different the system is for workers. If a wealthy business owner would prefer to use their money on other things besides taxes, a buffet of options is available. Meanwhile, our system is remarkably efficient and capable of taxing labor. And in fact, one thing we eventually learned when looking at this tax return data was that you knew you'd found somebody really wealthy if they didn't have any wages at all. I know that everyone on this team of reporters felt a heavy responsibility this year. There's never been this sort of leak of tax data, and it might very well not happen again. But it came to us, and that meant it was our job, on behalf of all Americans, to analyze it and translate what it meant. We did our stories this year with the conviction that if we named names and laid everything out in a way that was as clear as possible, that we had a really unique opportunity to get through to the American public, to get them to read about taxes to allow people to understand for the first time how our system really works. Of course, this award is a heartening vindication of that belief. And it's nice that the proposals have emerged in Washington to fix some of these problems, though whether they pass, who knows. But more important, I think, is that from my vantage point at least, the conversation has shifted, and the idea, say, that Bezos can effectively opt out from paying taxes has sunk in. Finally, we'd like to thank ProPublica for supporting us during this project. It took organizational metal to publish story after story directed 
at the deepest pockets in the world. And of course, ProPublica is a nonprofit that, at least in part, relies on the wealthy for its funding. More than once, we had to disclose in a story that the billionaire we were writing about was a donor. But that didn't stop us from writing the story. So I'd say thanks. Uh... All right. On behalf of uh, Justin Ellis, thanks for the Hillman Foundation. Uh, thanks for listening.